there's been times where I thought I was a type four. And I know that's with my three and four friends. I know three wing four, four wing three. It's, it's a, it's hard to know which, which one you are because mm-hmm. it blends together so much. Um, but I, I love being introspective. Um, I tied for a type five, which now looking back, I see the three wing four can, can look five ish because we are, can be private and quiet and focused. Um, and so I go to, you know, my happy place is going to a coffee shop all day or to the, to the office or basement just to get away from the world to focus. Um, and I, that causes me to be, uh, dangerously productive, uh, when I can, uh, be focused and would and not get caught up in all the interruptions of the day and not get caught up in the conversations, but to, but to pull back, um, as a four and be introspective and creative with along with a three, it, it's it, yeah, it helps me to be dangerously productive. Hey everyone, it's Beth. And I'm Jeff. And this is your Enneagram Coach, the podcast. Well, hey, today we're talking about type threes. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the wings for a type three, which are the numbers next to their type, their main type, which is two and four. If the concept of wings is new to you or maybe even confusing, you can head back to episode 160 where we go through it in detail. Today, we're going to be talking about and two type threes, the two of them. So for examples, if you, I identify as a type six, so my wings are five and seven, Beth's a nine, so her wings are one and eight. Yep. So we get the honor of speaking to type threes about their type two wing and their type four wing. But remember that their main type is the driving force behind why they think, feel, and behave in particular ways based on their core motivations, which is the core fear, desire, weakness, and their longing. But your uh, wings play a significant role because they're trying to influence your main type from their perspective, their core motivations. They definitely think they've got it right. So they're going to try to influence your main type to go with what they think or what they want you to do. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is how do your wings show up in healthy and less healthy ways and affect your relationships? And so we want to dive in and and also hear stories from our guests who are type threes so that we can better assess ourselves, surrender and depend on Christ to come in and to help our hearts to change, to be more like him. Well, and because of our relationships to these two wings in our lives, they play a significant role Mm -hmm. Uh, to understand our relationship with our wings. We're going to be referring to our wings as parts of us. Uh, which we discuss more in our new book, More Than Your Number. So be sure to go check it out so that you can understand the concept even more and understand how these parts of us play a dynamic part in our growth and better understanding of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So talking about our wings as parts might seem strange at first, but we actually already speak this way without even realizing it. And when you talk to others, you can feel pulled in different directions, maybe both in thoughts and feelings. So we'll say stuff like, a part of me or wants or feels this way, or another part of me uh, feels this way or the desires to do this. So your wings bring their own perspectives based upon their core motivations that can at times be in alignment or misaligned with our sense of selves. And so we can feel the ambivalence and feel stuck, torn, or maybe indecisive. So as we talk about type three's wings with our guests, We'll introduce here who we're going to introduce here in a moment. Keep in mind that they always remain their main type as a type three, Mm -hmm. but the core motivations of these other types play a role in their lives. So the type two and the type four will show up and influence their thoughts and behaviors, both in positive and negative ways. Yeah. So before I introduce the the guest, I just want to give you an overview once again about our type threes, which are the admirable achievers because they love to achieve goals and they do an excellent job at it. And it seems like for the rest of us, they do it with such ease and confidence. Now type threes, their core fear is being exposed or thought of as incompetent, inefficient, or worthless. And definitely they fear failing or appearing unsuccessful. Now their core desire is to have high status, to be respected, admired, to be successful and valuable. Now, their core weakness is deceit. Now, this is where they're deceiving themselves into believing that they're only the image they are presenting to others. So they feel like they need to embellish the truth by putting on a polished persona for everyone, including themselves, to see and admire. But their core longing, the message they long to hear is you are loved and valued for simply being you. Now, when they set their mind to something, they deliver. 
they have an, they have established a really cool social network and career network um, where they know how to get things done and get things done well. They know how to open doors to new opportunities. They have a lot of charisma and self-confidence that inspire not only themselves to reach goals, but also inspire others as well. Now, when you have a type two in your life, you're gonna always know that they're behind you, cheering you on, mentoring you, and encouraging you all the way through. Internally, it's difficult for them to rest and just to be. In our fast-paced society and a society that is comparing all the time, for them, they see these limitless opportunities to achieve and to be driven and to be successful. And this is a real burden on them because when does it end? They are always feeling the pressure to keep up, to do the next thing, and to excel. Now, their accomplishments may appear effortless, but trust me, it comes at a great price to them. That's right. Well, our guests today are Linda Hannigan and Tyler Zach. Uh, so guys, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, Linda, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I'm so honored to be here and uh, just about started crying when you were sharing about <laughs> the burden of a three. I was like, oh, ow, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right. Um, yeah, I'm Canadian born and raised and um, but I've lived in the States near Seattle area in Tacoma, Washington for over 20 years. My husband and I have three sons and uh, they are ages 20, 18 and um, 15. So time, it just is fleeting. Um, I'm originally um, was in marketing and public relations in the fashion industry in Canada. When we moved down here, became a stay at home mom due to the nature of my husband's profession. And when my youngest started um, kindergarten, I actually started back in seminary, decided to get my bachelor's of theology through our church. Um, and just really super part-time, like so part-time that I'm actually just now graduating with that this spring, which I'm really excited about. So it was in 2018 that I discovered the Enneagram and won't share all of that. Um, we'll probably dive more into that later, but found your Enneagram coach in 2020 and was in your first Zoom group. Um, that did the certification in the fall of 2020, launched Nine Lumens. It's the Enneagram coaching um, part-time business I have right now. And um, this will be my third year. And I, every day, every day that I coach feels like a gift. It really is. Um, I didn't know coaching existed before discovering the Enneagram. And I so, it just felt like everything synced, like what I'm supposed to, how I'm supposed to fulfill my calling for God. Yeah, I love oh, that. Well, mm -hmm. Welcome, Linda. We're so glad you're Thanks. here. Uh, and then next up is Tyler. Tyler, welcome to the show. Hey, it's also an honor to be here with you guys. Uh, I just appreciate getting the chance to be on with you guys. And I'm a small town uh, guy, so I grew up in a town of about 700 people in northeast Nebraska, uh, surrounded by a bunch of cornfields. Uh, and then I went to uh, Omaha to go to college and uh, became a Christian through the ministry of Campus Crusade, now called Crew. And so I decided to do campus ministry full time after that and really invested in fraternity and sorority uh, students. And then from there, uh, was on staff for about nine years with my wife, um, Lindsay. She's a six-wing seven, uh, so she's very witty, very sarcastic, um, very sweet. And we were on staff together for about, yeah, nine years. In the meantime, we adopted two boys that are now nine and 11, Zane and Zeke. Uh, and uh, so we love telling their adoption stories. Uh, our youngest is on the spectrum, so that's pretty you know, produced a lot of challenges and uh, just um, some incredible stories. And uh, after I left Crew, uh, I became a pastor and a church planter for another nine years. And so have been using the Enneagram with premarital counseling and staff team and, and all that. And uh, this is this month is my first month not being in full time pastoral ministry. So <clears throat> just transition out of pastoral ministry. Uh, just to help my wife with our sons, uh, particularly our youngest on the on the spectrum, to to do more tutoring and just offer more support with her, and then take that opportunity to do more writing and uh, more enneagram work. So this is my first month, uh, sort of as a author and enneagram coach, and so I'm just enjoying it. Yes, that's wow. so fun. We're so excited that you get to to be able to do that. And you know, so far, you how many of the forty day uh, devotionals have you written? Yep, I've written six of the nine, and I'm working on type seven right now, and so that'll be the seventh book that comes out in a couple months. 
Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So you can look at all of his work um, at gospelforenneagram.com and get your journal or your devotional if it's out. And the, other, the others will be coming somewhat soon, right? It takes a little bit of time, but man, they sure are dynamic. Well, Linda and Tyler, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's common for people to talk most about their dominant wing, um, which is the wing that they notice and use the most in their life. And many out there believe that they only have one wing, but that's simply not the case. And just as a bird has two wings, so do each Enneagram type. So today we're going to be talking about both wings because it's important to recognize and be aware of how the type, the two wing and the four wing both show up in uh, in our lives. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive in and we're going to look at both wings, but we're going to really focus in on type two first in the healthy and unhealthy ways that it shows up. So let me first paint a picture of what the type two even looks like and why they would show up in certain ways. And so remember, the type two has its own perspective, right? It's seeing, interpreting, and reacting to the world based on its core motivations. So the type two wing, its core fear is being rejected, unwanted, thought worthless, maybe others thinking they're needy, insignificant, dispensable, and definitely unworthy of love but it has the desire to be appreciated, loved, and wanted. So the type two wing will insist that the type uh, three main type that you guys have, um, that its style of relating needs to incorporate the two's tendency to be highly relational, friendly, cheerful, energetic, talkative, and engaging. Now it successfully uses your talents to connect with others and to receive their attention and love from others. Now it's gonna give you a more generous team player feel that others are going to sense. And it's gonna help you to share your abilities with others as you mentor, as you coach, as you teach others towards success. Um, well, let's take a look at some of the healthy uh, dynamics that really can show up. And some of the, the two aspects that are really healthy that add to the three is your instinctual knowing of how other people are feeling, especially their needs, and how to engage with them with compassion, friendship, and support. You also are gonna be able to extend yourself with care and love for people where they need it most. Um, so the type three can push their feelings to the, to the side and really just get to work, but this two part of you is gonna notice other people and it's going to want to help others. But especially when you're healthy, your two is going to help you to notice your feelings. It's going to help you to notice what your needs are and to set up some boundaries so that you can actually take good care of yourself. Now, again, that's when your type two is at a healthy place. But not only is your uh, two wing going to help you to set, set up boundaries with others, but it's also going to help you set up boundaries for yourself, which is so important because threes can be workaholics and go, 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 and never really take time to think about what their needs are and to take care of themselves. So that two, when it's healthy, can really help you to dial it in, to take a step back and to engage personally, but also relationally with others in a fun way, not just a work way. So guys, share with us how your type two shows up in healthy ways and give us any kind of examples or stories. Um, we just, it'd be so fascinating to hear how the three who can push those feelings aside actually incorporate feelings and incorporate relationships. Yeah. Linda, why don't you go first? Thanks. Um, well, actually when I first read about the Enneagram, I thought I was a two. That's how strong that two piece is for me. I lived as a two for more, almost a whole year. And so much of what you said is 100% true for me, the relational piece um, as a Christian woman, putting aside my feelings, serving others. Um, it really felt like I can see it now that that serving, knowing other people's needs, all of that was a place that actually was really, really rewarded. And so I think that's like it almost felt in my work as a three, I'm seeing now that that almost was like my stage for success was serving and helping. And um, so you being relational and sitting in the back part of the stage, not being the performing, like it's, if I would go through a list of threes, a lot of it I don't tick off. Um, I tick off probably more two than three. And so there was a discerning moment though when I was listening to another podcast and it was um, a woman who thought she was a one and she was talking about how she was playing Lego with her kids, but the kids thought she was playing Lego, but she was actually organizing the Lego. 
And I was rocked because I realized that has been my whole motherhood. And I don't know if maybe some of the three things that I don't identify with was having taken a bit of a 15 year sabbatical from being in work, you know, and having family. But I just poured into that serving my family, being the best mom, being the best wife, you know, all of that. So um, that was very clarifying. And then I really began to see how not present I actually have been with my family. Um, putting aside my feelings and performing for them in that desire to hear I'm a great mom you know you're a great wife you're a great Christian girl you're a great servant you're you know and so it was very clarifying and very humbling the piece that didn't really resonate with me though it was like I tell people I don't have an eight bone in my body and so when I read (laughs) about the past I was like I just don't see that eight piece in me I just didn't see that five and so I somehow I you know, it just that I could make it work. You know, I was like, oh, yes. I, yeah. And so that's that's yeah. the two stories. Very, very large, yeah. very large in my world. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that makes total sense. Like you were saying, the Christian community really tries to they elevate love to women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Elevate like that servanthood and thinking mm-hmm. of others and sacrificing, you know, all of who you are. Mm-hmm. And so coupled with the three to to not only get the affirmation that you're serving so well and you're being selfless, you know, from that two perspective, but also the three of, yeah, you're killing it. You know, as a Christian woman, you're killing it. You're doing amazing. Like those two combined, I can see how that could uh, perpetuate the same uh, patterns Mm -hmm. over and over. Yeah. No, Tyler, uh, you identify more with the four wing and I'd love to hear some of your thoughts after hearing Beth explain what the two wing looks like, and then also uh, hearing from Linda, uh, do you how do you see the two part of your heart showing up in healthy ways? Yeah, so that for the type two, there are some things that really resonate, and one of those is the encouraging piece of the type two. And so I remember at an early age, my mom uh, making me write thank you notes. You know, after Christmas and birthdays, uh, she would have me sit down and write a thank you note to all all the relatives. And I remember writing them and I remember her complimenting me on those. Like, well, these are tremendous. I remember affirming me for how I was thanking others. And uh, I guess the the encouragement was um, the way that I was encouraging and thoughtful about my thank yous. I just remember that encouragement as a kid. And I think that still carries through to, to today, right? I just love encouraging. It's one of my top, uh, I think words of affirmation would be my top love language. And uh, even in the books that I'm writing now, I don't view them as sort of intellectual books uh, for the 40 day devotionals, but I see them as, as letters of encouragement. And I like that. I don't get, it's not a typical book where you just write content, but it's, it's a letter. I'm, I'm speaking directly to sevens. I'm speaking directly to twos. And so I get to make it a letter and be as encouraging as possible to make sure that they feel uh, just affirmed and loved and wanted. And the other thing is, um, I just know that twos like facilitating uh, social spaces that are very positive and uplifting. And looking back at my career as a pastor, and when it comes to staff meetings and things like that, I look back and, and think now that my a lot of my filter was, how can I create a positive and orchestrate positive experiences for the team? So it's not just, hey, what are our goals, which a type, type three does? Um, but how can I make people feel good coming out of this meeting? Uh, how can we create space at the beginning of the meeting for us to have icebreakers and uh, ways of getting to know each other? How can we call it greatness in each other? Uh, calling out greatness was just a big theme uh, of, of those meetings. And so, yeah, I can see a little bit of that uh, as a pastor. It's interesting hearing the both of you. I w- um, wings have some complexity to them that um, can really help our main type. And But it, from hearing from you both, it seems like this two part of you actually helps to connect you with people. And you can also mm-hmm. say that the four part of you helps you to connect with yourself and understand mm-hmm. what's actually happening for you. But it, it does, and for the three that could be so task oriented, that that maybe this part of your heart actually helps you to stay engaged with people. Would mm-hmm. you, is, is that fair to, to say? Yeah, I think what's interesting and maybe why I had a hard time tearing apart that two and three is sort of what you're getting at in that I am so relational and I'm, but it, I hate to say it, 
like someone said some once that a three can sometimes make other people feel like they're a part of their to-do list. And that's mm-hmm. not my heart, but it's like anyone who's in my sphere is like, I have something that I can be doing for them, but it's mm-hmm. not in a two way I've been learning through all my years in this, all yeah. of this, because yeah. it's because I want them to succeed. I want them to be encouraged. Mm-hmm. I want them to have the best life. Like, it's not like I want to fill that gap. It's like, how right. can I connect you? How can I make you feel welcome? How can I like everything that even Tyler said there within in environments being encouraging? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But it more is for that feeling that someone walks away feeling like, really encouraged not because yeah. I was the one well, I mean that's going yeah. to being a coach right <laughs> a coach yes. a mentor a leader a teacher mm-hmm. you know like really helping someone else to become the best version of who they are mm-hmm. and that is the gift of a three especially bringing in that two quality of connecting with others and seeing what their needs are and helping you to encourage and and either educate or guide them towards their healthiest path, which is great because that's yeah. exactly what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, now we're going to focus on how your two wing shows up in less healthy ways. Mm-hmm. But it's important to keep this in mind that these parts of us actually have positive intent right. and they're actually trying to help. Now, for the wing two can bring with it its pride. Mm-hmm. And by that, I don't mean uh, uh, unhealthy self-esteem, but the pride of a two that is blended with the main type three is connected to what uh, you achieve, Mm. possess, you're associated with, and the belief that you know what is best for others. It's typically excessive, unaware of its intrusiveness in the lives of others, and comes off as arrogance or maybe even vanity. Well, healthy self-esteem, on the other hand, is confidence in your inherent worth and gifts regardless of the outcomes. Your type two wing will persuade your type three to achieve from the type two's perspective. It can cause, it can use uh, false flattery, manipulation, mm-hmm. performance to connect with others to receive the affirmation that you're longing for. It can make you unaware of your own needs and emotions so that you can focus solely on achieving. And you may demand that others see your good intentions and give you the praise that you seek because you believe you need to earn love and affection by helping, supporting, and advising others. So uh, let's start with you, Tyler. How do you feel like your uh, two wing shows up for you, but maybe in unhealthy ways? Mm -hmm. Uh, Flattery, for sure. Uh, that's, that's That's a big one. And after I just got done with the type two book. And so this is fresh on my mind, but sure. you know, I used to think that there was no such thing as too much encouragement. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I would just prefer me and Linda could just go back and forth and give each other compliments all, all day, day and be like, and be like, this, this is great. It doesn't all need to be hundred percent true. Uh, but this is fun. Hey, include it's, me. My, my love language is words of affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I never thought about the fact that too much encouragement Mm-hmm. Uh, or overdoing it could actually be unhealthy. Never mm-hmm. thought, just ne- thought never crossed my mind. Uh, and then, but but seeing how flattery shows up when um, I want to secure the admiration of people, particularly in authority. Um, you know, just you know, meeting you guys, Beth and Jeff, for the first time. Uh, you know, you guys, you guys are you know like spiritual heroes of mine and. You guys have gone before us and done so much amazing work. And there's just that temptation that arises in me whenever I, whenever that happens to go overboard, uh, to secure the admiration of, of people that I really respect, particularly those in authority uh, or the influencers. And so that temptation's always there to go, to stretch the truth, to go beyond what's true and real uh, in order to try to get uh, admiration uh, in return. Yeah, I was going to ask, and you spoke to us just then about g- getting the affirmation. What do you think this two-part needs to hear from mm-hmm. you about who you are and your value? The the two part of me. Yeah. Um, well, you know, as a three, we need to to know that we're loved for who we are, not what not what yeah. we do. Mm-hmm. And the two needs to hear that we're loved for who we are not what we give, mm-hmm. uh, yes. you know, or can provide for other people. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, 
So the, the benefit of, of this kind of model of thinking about wings, not as simply descriptions of a subtype, but actually having relationship with this part of our heart is that uh, we can feel embarrassment regarding this part of us. Um, we can... Well, it can feel like a real tug of war at times. That's right. And even other people like our spouses may see like, well, hey, Tyler, like you're going a little overboard on the affirmation there, bro. <laughs> you like other people ha- can see these parts in mm-hmm. us, and actually, there's an opportunity for us to see that these parts of us are just trying to make it in a fallen and sinful world like we are. And this is a strategy that we've adopted. It's been with us for a long time, and we are trying to find some element of security related to the core messages of our hearts. Yeah. Well, Linda, what about you? Uh, how does your two wings show up in maybe unhealthy ways? Mm, well, everything that Beth just read there. <laughs> It's like, that's a tear sheet from my life. <laughs> um, probably the thing that stuck out the most when you said that is that narrative that um, that lovely combination of pride and threeness of wanting the best of like, I know the best thing for you, especially when yeah. it comes to family or especially like my husband would tell you or my kids where it's like this wrestle inside to see them choosing something different than I would. Because I think, oh, that's not the best case scenario. Like there's this constant need for feeling like it has to be the best, the best vacation, the best this. And it feels pretty, um, yeah, I'm sitting a little uncomfortable in my seat for sure. You know, like that's <laughs> sure. that's real. It's like that's that unhealthy. But I, yeah. but I love, it's both, right? It's both. And that's where we mm-hmm. want to honor how God created us. I mean, mm-hmm. it's such a beautiful thing that you want the best for your family, Mm -hmm. right? Like we, who doesn't want a mom who wants the best for them? Sure. Um, And at the same time to recognize when it shows up in ways that has gone too far. Yeah. You know, when, when maybe you're like a a two can be intrusive with their advice and their help and their support, when that desire to give them the best is then intruding and insisting that they choose your what you think is best yeah yeah Yeah, that might be overstepping the lines and at the same time honoring this part you know and welcoming it and and um thanking it for desiring the best but also being you know the adult the mature the coach within your heart to lead this part into a healthier path Mm -hmm. is also just such a a gift that we can actually do that as well well and maybe listeners have heard me say this before but it, it really was a profound principle that has been really impactful to my life. But these parts of us at times that we feel ashamed of, um, part of the reason, the origins of that shame is the reality that we've been using this part of us to cope. And so it's a part of us that we've used to deal with our pain, our own sense of loneliness, and maybe uh, the contempt that we have towards ourselves but it's also part of our calling like this is the very thing that we this part of us can be used as we exercise our sense of stewardship and calling of our lives so it's right. it's a gift to others but we recognize we've used it at times in our own strength in our own way apart well, from Well and that's the why like when we're when we are training especially other coaches or when I'm actually coaching I I try to help people to see that the enneagram can be like a rumble strip on the highway you know because like what you're saying Linda like you're on, you're driving down the highway, you know, being a mom and you're giving the best that you can for your kids, that you're health, you're going towards the healthiest destination. But we can sometimes start falling asleep to ourselves and getting on autopilot and not realizing the wheel is starting to turn in the wrong direction. But that rumble strip can wake us up. And that's where and we... the rumble strip is not the invitation to pull into the ditch. Right, right. It's to wake up and to get back on your yeah. right path. So it's so for the three with a two wing. Okay, so man, this is awesome. I, I want to serve my family and love them and give them the best. Oh, but when I start to kind of demand or insist that they do it my way, because my way I think is the best way. Oh, that's the rumble strip, you know, and what was it, what would it look like to offer my suggestions, but also take a step back and to allow them to live their life. And so it's just that small pivot. Cause like when we're on the highway and we hit that rumble strip, yeah, you don't want to just take the wheel and go, Oh, guess what? I'm going to just move right into the ditch. But a lot of times that's what we do in life. Right? So we're like, Oh, 
you're not going to listen to me. I'm going to even go harder and faster. And, and then we fall into that ditch and like, how did yeah. I get here again? Yeah. But these rumble strips can really wake us up to, oh, I have good intention, but let me get back. Let me steer it back into a healthier direction because what I have to offer is really, uh, truly remarkable for myself and my family. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, I'll, and I'll throw okay. in there too. It was really interesting because I don't think I saw that really until teenagers, right? Because mm -hmm. like in the early parts of your life, you you have way more ability to kind of direct what your kids are doing yes. and their activities. And you need and to. That. And you need to. And so it was, it was, I'm so thankful for the, the that growth and learning. And I, mm -hmm. I call it like that fleshy feeling when I can tell that it's really mm -hmm. not like a, yeah. it's a little bit unhealthy. I call it kind of feeling fleshy. <laughs> You know, when say my a teenager's choosing something that I'm like, that is just not what I'd be doing, but just letting go and letting God, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. And then really going, do I need to be, what is my idea, the best idea? Really? Like, who am I to say that it is? That's the, I think also the pride is being willing to admit that just because it is my idea does not mean it is the best idea. Yeah. Ah, beautifully I said. just remember, um, remember, remember just, uh, you know, dealing with the two resentment, uh, in my dating life, uh, with multiple <laughs> girlfriends. And, uh, I remember back when the original hotmail, you know, existed and it had like the, the size of the email, you know, the 2k or 3k, you know, however much you write. And I remember writing my, my girlfriend long emails, you know, encouraging, oh, wow. talking about how great a relationship was. And I would feel resentment when she would respond back to my 4k email with like one K, you know, text. <laughs> like I poured my heart out for you, yes. but you won't do the same. You know, like Bruno Mars, like I would catch a grenade for you, but you won't do us the same. You know, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know that's that a two theme, funny. but I just thought back to I just remember mm -hmm. that, that that first relationship. Well, you measured the size of the email. Yes, but <laughs> that is so awesome. I mean, that is like such a perfect. And we'll get into the type four wing. Yeah. That's such a perfect segue of both, right? Mm -hmm. So the twos give to get, right? So you're giving affirmations and encouragement, hoping that you'll get back the same, if not even more from her. But the four goes in with a lot of depth and emotionality and, and wanting connection on that deeper level. And so it's kind of the same thing. Like, you don't understand. You're like, you don't understand me. Why, why aren't you giving back? the same depth that I'm giving you. So I could see both of these wings showing up. Um, and, and we certainly wouldn't want to shame that part of Tyler's heart because in, in some sense it right? was wanting to be seen yeah. and wanting someone to experience love and appreciation. Yeah. So although misguided uh, and maybe not tempered with the assurance we have in the gospel, it, it is a, a good part of us to want oh, to connect. Absolutely. Them. Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, it's really good for us to become aware of when our heart is misaligned so that we can get it back into alignment. But it's also really important for us to know when we're healthy, because sometimes we'll even get off track in our healthiness, kind of like, oh, things are going well. And then we get on autopilot and then we're not doing as well. And that must be a problem for other types, because as a six, like it, <laughs> if I start feeling any sense of peace or kind of like, OK, what's what's happening? Something suspicious. So the tsunami's coming. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Um, but it's good. But for, we're doing great, Beth. We're but fine. here. I'll say this: it's good for you to be to recognize when you're healthy because a lot of times sixes won't. Oh no! Look at it and won't accept the affirmations yeah. or this, the truth. This engine is attuned to guilt and shame. <laughs> like it doesn't but run on affirmation. The reason why that's important is that you're potentially. Thank missing you. the opportunity to go, oh, wait, that is how my five wing really blesses people. And that's how my seven wing, and Absolutely. I can use that in the future. Absolutely. What, what, what was that? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Beth wants it recorded and on the internet for, for, for all, all, time. all times. Oh, man. Beth McCord. <laughs> this is Jeff McCord, your husband. And I am saying before our audience of millions of people. And all the people. I, you were right. Thank you. Awesome. I won. <laughs> type threes, you're loving it, aren't you? <laughs> no, I just want right, well, to keep talking about type threes because it's our time to shine. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well done, okay. Tyler. 
Well, here we go. We're going to dive into the Type 4 wing. So let me just give a little bit of background on this. Now, some people are really surprised that the 3 is a 4 wing because they really are very different. The 3s are like your shapeshifters. They can put on different masks and, and it look their best part. Um, and again, just kind of deceive people into I'm way better than I actually am. Whereas the four is like, hold, hold on. No, we are going to do this in the most authentic way, unique, and we are definitely going to express ourselves. Um, and the three will be like, hold on. No, you can't do that. No, wait. So there's a lot of conflict that can happen between the three and the four. And I can completely understand because I'm a nine with an eight wing or predominantly an eight wing. I use my one a lot too, but I feel that tension inside. So it'd be really interesting to hear how this tension is for you guys. But let me explain the core motivations of the four. So the four fears being inadequate, emotionally cut off, plain, mundane, defective, flawed, insignificant, and not people not understanding them. But they desire to be unique, special, and their most authentic self. So this wing can actually pull you into a place of being a little bit more withdrawn, maybe private, quiet, less energetic, and then primary focusing on achieving and recognition for praise that is unique to you and unique to your accomplishments so that you have like this special status. Now, it supports your main type when it is healthy by helping you to connect with your emotions, being able to be highly creative and the desire for beauty and what is ideal. And it enables you to actually sit with others when they're struggling without the need to like push it aside or hurry it up or to fix them, that you can actually be with others in their sorrow and in their grief. It also enables you to be genuine and real, removing those achieving masks and really being with another person in a genuine way. It also allows you to set aside the highlight reels and to be honest with what life actually is giving you in the moment and to have those honest conversations with people. So uh, Tyler, let's start with you since this is more of your dominant wing, the one that you experience the most, what are some of the healthy qualities that you notice about your uh, four wing and how does it show up for you? Yeah, well, like Linda, there's there's been times where I thought I was a type four and I know that's with my three and four friends, I know three wing four, four wing three. It's, it's a, it's hard to know which, which one you are because mm -hmm. it blends together so much. Um, but I, I love being introspective. Um, I tied for a type five, which now looking back, I see the three wing four can, can look five ish because we are, can be private and quiet and focused. Um, and so I go to, you know, my happy place is going to a coffee shop all day or to the, to the office or basement just to get away from the world to focus. Um, and I, that causes me to be, uh, dangerously productive, uh, when I can, uh, be focused and would and not get caught up in all the interruptions of the day and not get caught up in the conversations, but to, but to pull back, um, as a four and be introspective and creative with along with a three, it, it's it, yeah, it helps me to be dangerously productive. Mm, um, I also love putting a unique spin on everything. Uh, mm. So as what an does achiever, that look like? I... yeah. So when I planted a church uh, back in 2015, um, I you know I wanted it to not look like every other church. Uh, I mm -hmm. didn't want it to be a cookie cutter church. I wanted it to be unique and special. I wanted it to to reflect the values or at least connect with the values of the, the neighborhood. And so was, I put it together a conference uh, called Better Benson to bring together uh, principals and business owners to talk about how we could partner with the neighborhood and in, in serving the, the, the top needs of the neighborhood and, and just doing um, unique things like that. Um, we started an arts nonprofit because it's a, it's a very creative artsy neighborhood. And so just doing things like that to put our own unique spin on the, the church and how we're ministering to people in a very unique and special way in the, in the, in the city. Does that make wow. sense? Oh, yeah. Well, nice. and it's fascinating because um, Jesse Eubanks, and I think you, you know Jesse, uh, he has the Enneacast podcast. He just learned this year that he is not a four with a three wing. He's a three with a four wing. And I would say exactly all that you're describing fits him too really, he really does. well. That's right. Mm-hmm. He has cultivated beauty mm -hmm. uh, into space. Yeah. And 
uh, and community and and the four part of him is served by the threeness that it's uh, knowing that there is evil to be battled mm -hmm. the threes press forward and although they're feeling and wanting to bring about something special for other people the three part of them pushes through well yeah can we talk yeah. about that as well because i think we had mentioned this a little bit earlier uh, before the podcast is you've really pressed in and researching about the origins of the enneagram and done such an amazing job pulling out so many factual nuggets that are are so beneficial and helpful for everyone but I can see how that is not only just the two part of you that is supporting and giving the things that people need, but also bringing a certain unique depth and research and understanding. Can you just kind of talk, walk us through, you know, your journey and this research and what you've kind of found and, and how the wings have played a part in that? Yeah. So I think that, you know, there's been multiple times throughout uh, my life where people have said, man, you're just so self-aware. And I think some of it is self-awareness, but I think what people are picking up on is that four introspection, that fours just naturally go deep and, you know, they're uh, the deep uh, sea divers of the human psyche uh, that, that rise to the surface and then show everybody, you know, all the treasures they found at the bottom of the ocean. And that sort of uh, describes me personally uh, of what I, I like to pull back and reflect and um, but also like to do that with my work. And you can see that with Jesse. Um, I actually did have that conversation with him yesterday. And, you know, you, you can see the, this, this depth and, and beauty in what he does with the Enneacast and the documentary style episodes that he does. And so I did that with the, or, with the or, Enneagram Origins uh, class where I did a deep, deep dive uh, for quite a while and uh, really tried to create a story out of it of here here's the here's the missing pieces that we haven't talked about here um are these individuals and from history and, and sort of crafting this this beautiful story to come back and tell people to give people clarity on the origins and then confidence to be able to use the enneagram as a christian yeah uh, so i definitely oh. see that the four wing active there mm. Linda, what about you how do you see the four part of your heart showing up in healthy ways well, I'm just going to say it was really interesting having you talk about that last little bit because um, I'm really passionate about women knowing that the Bible is for them and not against them. And I do mm. curriculum and studies for women. And exactly how you described it, like I'm doing a, um, a, series, on the women, a series on the women around the cross. And I did a series last year around the women that co-labored with Paul to birth the church. And I just love pulling the stories of these women out of scripture and thinking about their lives, like, and who they really were. Like, they're not just names on a page to me. Like, I'm just so passionate about that. So I've never thought of that as a four piece. I just hadn't really thought of that. So, hey, because everything else, like when you talk about introspection and the the beauty of the four, I um, that's not been my story. Um, the four piece it feels really, really like vacant and void to me. Um, it's been my hardest, hardest work to be willing to go um, to sit in a feeling even like um, feel selfish. I find myself feeling really self-centered. I feel like I'm being selfish, having a feeling, admitting I have feelings, naming feelings has been I, I use a feeling wheel. I have a friend who's a, a colleague who's a four and he's like, will kind of reprimand me sometimes in a very kind way. Like, when was the last time you looked at your feeling wheel, Linda? Cause I ask how you are and you just give me doings. And I'm like, <laughs> feeling wheel. you know, yeah, you mean um, that thing that's over there in the trash can? Yeah, what, what are you no, it's about? in the trash can. <laughs> I, I actually have to keep it like now I keep it yes. literally with my Bible in my devotion, wow, in, my, yeah. in my devotional time in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, really leaning into the pause app right now with John Eldridge and he talks about naming feelings and sitting them. It is yeah. hard work for me. I yeah. wonder if it's because of as a little girl, like, you know how you talk about child, what we interpret is that somehow yeah. I picked up that having a lot of emotion was not rewarded, you know, so yeah. move on, do something you know, yep. care, like no pain, no gain, like carry on, be productive. Mm -hmm. We're hard workers, you know, so I admire it. And um, I want to give you a huge compliment. Like, this is a three thing of being encouraging. <laughs> I'm like, way to go, Tyler. You're nailing it. You're doing a great job. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I love that. hearing Thanks you both, uh, just something that 
uh, I was impressed with. So threes being at the center of the heart triad mm -hmm. and the big burden that they bury is shame. Mm -hmm. Well, the flip side of shame is glory, that we actually have this God-given dignity and honor that David would write like, man, even the angels are amazed by these human beings. So I, it's so neat to see for you both how being a three who living out God's calling of not bringing glory to yourself, but bringing glory to others, that God has gifted threes with one, a wing, four, that sees people's glory and uniqueness mm -hmm. and design and a two wing that also is willing to help them to become who God wants them to be. Like they have a, a vision for their life and want to be their advocate, their support. Mm -hmm. All the things that Jesus, then the spirit and his word are for us. Threes get to reflect something of the nature of God and helping people to live out their glory. And with, with all the resources that are necessary to do that, and you can see it even in your stories about working for, on behalf of women or working on behalf of those who have found the Enneagram uh, helpful to their lives. Super grateful for that. Well, here's the other thing. The great thing about the Enneagram is that it's a non-judgmental friend, and so there's unhealthy parts of this stuff too. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> so awesome. This faint little... <laughs> We just love it. We, and so the the four wing can actually show up in unhealthy ways. But remember, like the two wing, it has positive intentions to protect us from being wounded and harmed again and experiencing pain. And so, but it's going to see the world through the lens of its core motivation. So when your four wing shows up, it can bring about moodiness, being temperamental or withdrawn. It can make you doubt your own ability to succeed. It might demand that others see or admire your unique contributions, uh, notable accomplishments, and profound creativity. It can also make you feel that you are different from others and exempt from the same rules uh, as others that, they, that you must follow, which can lead to self-indulgence and going after what you want with little regard for others that are in your life. So uh, let's go back to Tyler. Um, so why don't you just tell us, just share with us briefly, how you feel like you're, this four part of you shows up in your life. Yeah, it is hard stuff to talk about. We're talking about the unhealthy pieces, like you said, Jeff, but I wish I would have known this stuff a long time ago. I wish my, my parents would have known the Enneagram and picked up on some of these things and because it really could have uh, prevented a lot of shame and sadness, you know, in my childhood growing up because I, I see these um, see these tendencies and, you know, you know, being a type four is, you know, like on Christmas morning, uh, it's, you're, you're outside the window looking in at everybody hanging out together and opening presents together. Like the four feels like they're in the room, but they're not in the room. They feel like they're not, um, like they don't belong and they're on the outside. And that resonates with a lot of my childhood, not, not feeling like I was a part of the, my friend group or even, on the staff teams I've been a part of feeling like I'm just too different than everyone else or different than the organization, you know, I belong to, or just feeling like I don't belong, uh, has been a big, a big theme. Mm -hmm. Um, also feeling like I came with manufactured defects, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that I'm flawed, not complete. Uh, as a pastor, I always felt like I was missing the key quality that everyone mm -hmm. wanted in a pastor. Uh, and so oh, always dude. wanting to kind of hit the eject you just button. Got, you sat down in my kitchen, bro. <laughs> I mean, that could be a podcast in itself. As a pastor, through the lens of your type, how do you feel like you never had it? Wow. Like you were yeah. fatally flawed and could never reach it. Yeah. Because uh, I totally and resonate with want to reject others before others get the chance to reject them. Hmm. And and so I always felt that temptation. Like I feel like leading pastoral ministry this this month, it was for good reasons. It was to, to help my help my wife uh, take care of our, our son. And it's for, there's family reasons. Um, but like there always was a tug in my heart being a pastor to get out, uh, before other people would realize that I'm deficient and defective and not the perfect pastor. And, um, you know, like it, just wanting to, to reject myself that before other people got the chance to reject me. Um, and you know, self-sabotage is always kind of right there, you know? Um, and so there was a time when I, I put my resignation in as a pastor, 
uh, about four years ago after receiving some nasty criticism. And through a turn of events, God prevented that from happening. Uh, where I actually turned in my resignation, but then through a turn of events, working with the the district team, uh, I, I wasn't I didn't I wasn't able to resign, uh, so I stayed in my my position. Um, and one year later, uh, I got the opportunity to lead our church to merge with a multi ethnic congregation, and I was able to co lead this new newly formed church uh, with a black pastor who was a type eight. And so we got to work together. He became one of my best friends. And it was the most, one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen God do. And I can't believe I almost blew that opportunity uh, through by self-sabotaging, by giving up too easily, by wanting to give away the farm and throwing the towel because of some criticism and shame that I received from some people in the church. Mm -hmm. So um, that hopefully that paints a little bit, you know, of a yeah. better picture of some of those things I was feeling. Linda, what about yourself? How do you say the yeah. four part of your heart? I mean, it's just so, yeah, ways? thanks. It's so interesting because it didn't resonate with me like that two piece did. Like, you know, I said, that was a tear sheet of my life. Like hearing you yeah. go through that list, I was like, no, no, no. Um, it, there's not a lot. It, there's some. I think I'm just because I'm willing to look at the four in my life more. I'm seeing them now is, oh, that's kind of. I'm willing to see that that could be a four thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I find um, that feelings feel like a force field to me, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so with there's too much feelings, I want to eject. It's more that like it's really it's almost like I can feel them coming. Um, if they're uh -huh. if they're really even strong in my house, I, I want to fix it. I want to do something for that person because the feelings are so um big so yeah it, it just doesn't hit a lot of spots in yeah. my my story but that's, i think that's really great because you know there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are in the same boat as you mm -hmm. and then there's gonna be some people who are like mm -hmm. me and i use both my wings quite a bit mm -hmm. um and your dad he's a type nine and sometimes we're like where i see a, maybe a smidge of a wing here and a smidge of a wing there but like you know <laughs> You know, the, the Enneagram joke of they're a nine with a nine wing, uh, you know, usually it's associated <laughs> with sevens. Like <laughs> That's your dad. That, that is that is my dad. I've actually read once in, in an older Enneagram book that I was given um, that sometimes if a wing is really heavy, it could be because their childhood environment didn't um, welcome that aspect or that childhood picked up that it wasn't welcomed. And when I read that, it just, it really resonated with me. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Like the, the foreness, there wasn't um, a perform, right. there was no performance around the foreness yeah. well, that was makes rewarded. Sense, especially being a three. Yeah. Cause threes mm -hmm. are looking for rewards mm -hmm. and they're going to follow the, the rewards. And if that's not rewarded, it's like, oh, well, I'm not going over there again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it makes me think Linda in, in my own personal life, I, I've always wrestled with the loneliness associated with leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I've become more curious about how that shows up in my own life and how loneliness as an, a feeling shows up in my story, um, someone asked me recently, Jeff, have you looked at your lon loneliness? I'm like, well, we don't actually look at each other. Like we're just sitting on the couch together, but we like we know you're there, but we're not going to acknowledge one another cuz it feels so so big. But what what happened in my experience is that once I actually turned and and maybe this is what you experience when you look at your emotion wheel is you start to feel like, oh, "Okay, this is actually a very young part of me that uh, I'm not sure I can handle what that experience was or the stories uh, that I carry in my body. And it can almost feel like I, I would be undone. If I look at my own loneliness, it will overcome me. When in reality, I found that younger wounded part of my heart and realized, oh, I know you felt big. You probably felt very big to your parents, which is why they didn't want to even touch it with a 10 foot pole. But I know that Pastor Jeff can look at that part of me with kindness and to remind little Jeffrey, like, hey, I'm, I am with you now, mm -hmm. and I don't want you to go unnoticed anymore. 
And but you are right. I mean, if if these parts of us are were not accepted at times, maybe treated with contempt, um, or even acknowledged by parents. I mean, even Tyler, you know, wished that his parents had seen this part of how it really was a burden to him, but they didn't have the categories. Uh, it can be then we repeat that same pattern in adulthood. Thanks for going there, Linda. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, I you know, and I don't know if this fits in. It's this idea that even now as a parent, we're really just doing the best we can with what we have. Yes. And so I absolutely maybe like Tyler, like I wish I had knowledge of the Enneagram because yeah. here I thought I was being the best mom ever by not showing my children literally any feelings or emotions. Like I hardly ever cried. And if I did, I completely vacated the house. Yeah. <laughs> My poor daughter-in-laws, I apologize to them all right now, my future daughter-in-laws, because that's not a healthy, that's not a healthy human being to not being able to willing yes. to, you know, um, so that I, I say that to say, you know, like, I'm sure it wasn't my parents intent to, to have me pick up this thing that having feelings is not rewarded, um, and yet also, I, I mean, I love my threeness. My yeah. ability to set aside feelings to get things done is awesome. <laughs> like, it, you know, yeah. like the, yeah. at that, I know that lonely feeling and I kind of go, okay, I'm learning to, to sit in it better. But there are mm -hmm. times where it's like even coaching clients, like a feeling might start to come at me about, and I just, I can go, no, nope, not right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, coach them. But what I'm getting better at is going back to the feeling, Jeff, and yes. writing about it yeah. in my journal the next morning. Well, I think that's, that's awesome. you know, that's really becoming aware is so important. We want to understand what's going on so that we can bring it to God, ask him to help us to navigate um, the unhealthy stuff towards being more healthy, to, to learn what it means to coach and lead our inner parts. And, you know, part of that is reflect self-reflection, slowing down and seeing what's going on. And and that can be really hard for those that are out there that type threes. This can be really hard to just sit and rest in what's actually happening because it's like, oh, wait, we're not being productive then. But actually you are, but it doesn't feel like that. And so to take the time to self-observe, to journal, to reflect, all of those things are really going to help you guys to see when you are on autopilot or when you're veering off course to help your heart get back into alignment um, so silence and solitude, prayer, journaling, all of those things can really be um, powerful exercises for growth. I remember doing um, silence exercises with a group of men and the threes in the group were like, we killed that silence. Like we, we, we were the best <laughs> we crushed it. practicers of silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it all of a sudden became competitive. And yeah. uh, the yeah. reality is, is that the nines just disassociated. So they were actually the experts of silence. They just, right. they just shut it down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And you can, I, I just found it so amazing to be willing to see emotion in the Bible now. Even just mm. this morning, I was reading in um, first Corinthians and I think it was first Corinthians and Paul admitted that if he lost one of his friends, I think it's Epaphras that he would have to feel sorrow. And I was like, wow, this is the guy that was saying, like, choose joy, you know, we're, we're mm -hmm. be content. Like, you know, this idea that Paul talked about sorrow, it was shocking to me to see it and go, oh, OK, yeah, yes. I can. And I know Jesus wept, I, it, but even seeing more than Jesus, like I kind of go, Jesus per is perfect. He can weep and yep. and and do yep. that perfectly. But here's Paul and he's human and he's telling us to, you know, there's so many things. And yet he admitted to feeling sorrow if one of his friends passed away. And I was just really struck by it today. Well, one little question I, I'd love to hear from you. This is uh, for the sake of other threes who might be at the beginning of their uh, journey of understanding their threeness. Um, but uh, Linda, at what, what would be your best resource that you would recommend to threes about understanding their, um, their emotions? Do you have a book? Hmm. Oh, really good question. Uh, well, I'm going to throw a pitch at your Enneagram Coach Network. I, honestly, uh, being coached was the biggest awareness aha for me, for sure. Mm. Yeah. But, and, but and on oh, the list of our customers, like, where are threes at who well, come for coaching? Yeah, they're one of the fewest. They're one of the fewest people yeah, who ask for coaching. Even though threes love to get coaching, 
when you're, but the Enneagram, we're just starting to dabble into being exposed and I'm not sure about going there, you know, as long as you're going to tell me the good things, yeah. well, then I'll go there. Or if you tell me how to, you know, achieve and excel, then I'll go there. But what you're saying is no, Enneagram coaching is so helpful because it helps you to see where you actually self-sabotage, where you mm -hmm. get stuck, that you don't even know it. But also what is the best path to grow, to get into a healthier place of life, work balance and all the things, the emotions and staying on task and all those things. The Enneagram coaching can really deliver in that area. Uh, and Tyler, what about you? What do you think, what would be your recommendation for three to go learn about emotions? Uh, the book of Psalms. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. Good word. So, and that's coming from uh, <laughs> a lot of heartache and pain. Um because me and Lindsay, you know, dealt with infertility for a number of years. And, uh, you know, I'm a three, so I'm not a four. I mean, you know, I have a four wing, but I, it's going, experiencing that pain, that depth was not natural to me. And so I did the three thing where I just swept everything under the rug and played the, played the, the God card of, you know, God's just going to work it out. Just believe you know, and so now in premarital sessions, whenever I have a three and a six, uh, which I've had two the last couple sessions, um, I, I always ask, does he tell you just believe, just have faith? You know, <laughs> and there's like he tells me all the time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and so I, it did, I didn't allow myself to go there. And I uh, had luckily I had some some people call me out. And mm -hmm. uh, and so just showing me that David was a man after God's own heart and that David wrestled with God. He didn't shove things under the rug, yeah. but he dealt with his right. emotions. He poured out his emotions. And so that was a the next year. All I did was just um, read Psalms for the next mm. year, just to be mm. a, acquainted with emotions and feelings mm. and having be natural to, to question, to question God, to yeah. wrestle wow. with God. And so, uh, yeah, the Psalms are, are great for that. Well, I'd say, you know, one thing that was really helpful for Beth and I as it related to on our, our life, but also parenting our children, because I remember in premarital counseling, I would ask people to write down, I'd give them 15 seconds, write down as many emotion words as they knew. And they would write down like three or four, and then they're done. Uh, we don't even have the vocabulary to explain, mm -hmm. but uh, Chip Dodd's book, Voice of the Heart, okay. which focuses on what he calls the eight core emotions uh, how, and how they show up in a repressed way, but also how they show up in healthy ways and how they're trying to move us was a tremendous exercise that we often use uh, a lot in our coaching to help people at, wow. uh, with vocabulary yeah. and experiencing. Go ahead, I just, Linda. I just have to say, Tyler, it's really interesting because I've had seasons where I've read through Psalms. And now that I think about it, I never walk away from Psalms feeling like I have to do more where I will often have like in my devotions, like throughout the New Testament or the Old Testament, I, I'm being honest, I, I will often walk away with feeling like I'm not doing enough. I should be doing more. I should be happy or I should be sad or I should, I'm not sharing the gospel enough. I'm not doing this or that. But I come to think of it, I don't think I've ever walked away from a psalm. I think I've, there's just something in it where it's just like, it's mm. so heartfelt. Anyway. Yeah. Except, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. No exception, so just good. yes. Well, thank you to you both. I have so appreciated this time together and hearing your insights and experiences and how God has made you. And I know mm -hmm. it's going to open the door wide for many threes to come in and sit around and just linger and find out more about themselves. So thank you so much. So uh, Linda, where, you're, you're a coach. So where can people find out more about you as a coach? Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram at nine lumens. It's the number nine and lumens, L-U-M-E-N-S or nine lumens.com number nine, L-U-M-E-N-S. And I'm on the network. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Great. So yeah. the network is my Enneagram That's where we have um, our certified coaches and they have their profile pages. Awesome. And Tyler, what about yourself? Yeah. Um, Instagram is where I get the most engagement. That's where the party's at. Uh, gospel for Enneagram is gospel F O R Enneagram. And also just started a YouTube channel and, uh, you can get the 40 day devotionals that I'm working on at gospel for Uh, you could search my name on Amazon, but that's kind of, there's a, there's a link on my website. So hopefully I'll get the series done by the end of this year. It's been a five year, five year project and it's been, just life-giving the whole step of yeah. the way so that is so so awesome that's fantastic 
Um, well, remember, if you're interested in the Enneagram, you can always visit our website, yourenneagramcoach.com. But if you want to take it a step further, just like Linda said, you can find out, find Linda and other certified coaches at myenneagramcoach.com. That's where our certified coaches are on a directory. Um, and for those who are like me and you've experienced transformation with the Enneagram and you can't wait to pay it forward and bless other people, then you would be really interested in our certification program called Become an Enneagram Coach. And to learn more, you can go to yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash BEC. And our team would love to help walk you through all the information that you need for that. But as always, remember the Enneagram reveals your need for Jesus, not your need to work harder because it is the gospel that transforms us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode where we're going to talk about type four's wings. So we'll see you then.